today is one of those days where I'm really not loving van life. We have had some absolutely incredible times living in our van over the last three years, traveling around Australia. It's been some of the most fun, exciting, adventurous times of our lives, but it's also been some of the most challenging. What you might not realize from watching our videos is that 50% of the time I live in this van alone. Nigel works away on a six week rotating roster. So for our six weeks at a time, I'm living solo van life. During that time, I don't really travel. I stay around one place and work from the van. In this episode, I wanna show you some of the things that people don't usually talk about and what happened when my nightmare became a reality. Solo van life's awesome. I mean, it's the ultimate freedom. I can do what I want, when I want, no one telling me what to do. But there's another side of van life that people don't really talk about. Some of the things that we may take for granted living in a house are much more of a chore and a challenge when you live in a van. And then there's days like this one. I hope that you can laugh along with me. I mean, I'm laughing about it now, but at the time it was an absolute nightmare. So keep watching to find out what happened. Firstly, I want to make it clear that I'm making this video not to complain or have a whinge. Not at all. I mean, I love van life. I love living this lifestyle. But, you know, there are so many images of van life out there on social media which portray it as this, like, you know, kind of utopian dream. Images of gorgeous young people staring wistfully out the back of their van at the sun setting over a beach. Yeah, I don't have any of those images to share with you. Um, not exactly young. But anyway, there is this other side and that's what I really want to talk about in this video. I think it's really important for people to get both sides of the story before they jump into this lifestyle. You know, we see so many people all the time popping up and going, oh, I really want to try it, van life. Van life looks so awesome. And yes, it is, but be aware of these things as well. I also want to acknowledge that I'm living this lifestyle by choice and I don't underestimate the incredible privilege it is to have that choice. You know, I know that there are people around the world that don't have the privilege of being able to travel. And I also know that here in Australia with the current housing crisis, more and more people are being forced to live in their vehicles because they don't have any alternative. You guys know about it because you see it on the news. I know about it because I actually see it out there in the campsites and the free camps and the places where I'm staying. So yeah, this is a very real issue, sadly. But just like most of you probably, I have to work and I work full time from the van. But of course, even though I'm living in this van full time, there are certain everyday life things that I still have to do. Every day I need to keep my eye on the water level of our 110 litre water tank. When it gets low, I have to drive somewhere to fill up the tank. On my own, 110 litres usually lasts me around four days, which includes quick daily showers. It's not always easy to find somewhere with access to water. When we're lucky, we find a place where the council provides water for free. So thank you to the RV friendly towns. But I have paid up to $15 to fill the tank. So now the water's filling up. I've got two more jobs to do. Firstly, I have to empty my rubbish and recycling. It's great that there's bins here. And the next thing I have to do is empty the pee jug. Dump points just over there. So today's one of these days where we need sunshine. I've got the inverter running to charge my computer down to 57%, currently using almost 60 watts. Computer's just charging. Um, I've moved the van. We just need these clouds to bugger off. Hmm. I was parked under this tree and that gave me no sun at all. So. 
hopefully we get a bit more blue sky. Otherwise I have to go for a drive and I don't really feel like going for a drive today. But I think I should be right for the rest of today. Tomorrow I might have to go for the drive. I'm just about to start cooking lunch and the gas just ran out. I've got one of my corn fritters already in the pan but I'm actually really happy about this because I've been expecting it to run out for days and I've been really worried that it would run out while I was in the shower but not today. We carry two 3.7 kilogram gas bottles in our gas locker. The idea is that we never run out so long as we remember to change each bottle out as soon as it's empty. Each bottle refill costs between $15 and $25, depending on where we are around the country when we have to refill it. And they last about a month, maybe a bit less if we're cooking a lot of pizza in our gas oven. And we have gas again. While we do love getting out for a challenging hike or bike ride every couple of days, Keeping to a routine is something that I have found really challenging while living in a van and particularly when it comes to my health and fitness routine. So I've recently signed up with the Legends program for their online fitness program which is completely tailored to me. These are great workouts that I can do from absolutely anywhere, no fancy gym equipment required. It's not too difficult but difficult enough to be challenging me. Check the description for a link and a sneaky discount code. Today, I just want to throw up my hands and go, I'm done. I'm here on my own. I'm getting woken up in the middle of the night by a mouse. And now I've got to try and somehow keep all my food safe and catch this mouse. My biggest worry, of course, is it's it's in the walls or in the ceiling and it's going to eat all the um, wiring. That's my biggest worry. Oh, man. This sucks. So, friends, I got woken up in the night. I could hear noises scratching around. And I'm like, oh, please don't tell me there's another mouse in the van. And I've just opened up the overhead cabinet where all our food is and look at this. Yeah, that looks a bit suspiciously like some sort of animal has been trying to get into the bread bag, doesn't it? I mean, look at all this. It's been trying to make a nest up in there. So last time I had a mouse, I stuffed all these cotton wool balls up here that were doused in peppermint oil because I heard that got rid of mice or deterred them. So clearly the mouse, well, the peppermint oil has wasted away. And the mouse has been trying to use those cotton balls to make the bloody nest. Oh, God. Hasn't been into my food, though. Strange. All right, big clean-up coming. Here we are at Mitre 10. Hopefully here we will find the solution. Okay, we have the mouse traps, two of them. These are the greatest mouse traps ever used. And they don't even kill them. So, yeah. You little mouse. We'll be seeing you. So apparently, mice don't like peppermint oil. So I'm drenching these cotton balls in peppermint oil. So I'm stuffing them up into these holes here. In the hope that that will drive the little bastard away. Of course, now the van stinks of peppermint, but not my favourite scent. If it gets rid of the mouse, I'm happy. Okay, so the next phase of Operation Let's Catch the Mouse, I've cleaned out the cupboard up there. I was smelling a little bit of peppermint oil earlier today, so we'll see how that goes. Got my trusty Mavis peanut butter here and these two traps. So I'm going to pop one up in the cupboard there and I'm going to pop the other one I've often caught mice down here in the step, so I'm going to pop one down there as well. Hopefully they work. All the stuff that was up in that cupboard is now on the bed, so I'm going to be sleeping with all of the camera equipment tonight. Anyway, just it's only me here, so it doesn't really matter. 
let's cross fingers. A little bit nervous and it's cold outside. I don't want to have to go for a long walk in the middle of a cold night just to get rid of a bloody mouse. So the trick with these things is to make sure you put the lid on properly because they um, made that mistake once. So basically we're just going to pop a little bit of peanut butter in here and on the lid. And then the way it works is it stands like that. So the mouse goes in here and he runs up here to get his treat and his weight forces that to close. And then that's locked then. You can't get out so long as this lid is put on nice and tight. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give him all the nice crunchy bits. It's a bit hard to do this with one hand. It's a bit much. That should be a good amount. And I'm just going to pop it there. I can't do this with one hand though. Right, so there's a little bit of peanut butter. Okay, that lid is on nice and tight. That, we just stand it up like that. Right, so let's put this one. Right, so that one's up there. So all the mess today was from up here, I think. So that should be good for him there. Okay, and the other one is down there in the stairwell. Please pray for me that the peppermint oil work today and all the mice have decamped and run away because they don't like a peppermint smelling van if that's worked i'll be like so happy i'm almost scared to get into bed and go to sleep now i can hear the mouse sure enough the trap has sprung. So, little Mr. Mouse in there. I think we are going for a bit of a walk. We're going for a walk in the dark. Go on. Out you go. Off he goes. Look at him, little fella. Go on, off you go. Don't be running that way. Several days later. So, I heard some scratching around in the night, so I put the mouse traps out. Looks like I've caught another one. So, this one's let off, and yeah, there's a mouse in there. Okay, so we're taking a little mouse friend, a little walk, going a couple of hundred meters down the road. Um, I'll put the camera down and hopefully we can catch him coming out of the mouse trap. Okay, little buddy, you ready? There you go. Come on. <laughs> Bloody hell, that gave me a fright. <laughs> <laughs> little bugger hopefully he doesn't come back two hours later I've just caught another one broad daylight it's like 10 o'clock in the morning the door was open the trap was sitting on the step and the mouse has gone into the trap so I'm not sure if it's the same one like I only walked maybe 200 meters away I have heard they'll make their way back so I'm going to actually take him with me today and I'm going to release him. I'm going to release him in the town. Well, not in the town, but I'm going to release him at um, the place where I fill up the water. I'm not staying here tonight. So yeah, but this is like two in one day. Seriously, it's a bit much. And that's three mice that I've had from this campsite. So I think they're probably coming here. It's a very popular campsite. It's been dry. I don't know why they keep coming into my van. Anyway, we're going to get rid of him today. Oh, this is not good. This large spider is a huntsman. Harmless, except if it falls in your lap while you're driving. Oh gosh, here I am. 
Minder my own business walking on this path. And there's a snake. Not far away from it at all. Excuse me. There's a snake. There it goes. Morning everyone. I had a terrible night's sleep last night. I was awake for a couple of hours in the night. So it's already after nine o'clock. I'm just having my cup of tea. I've got a bit of a dilemma this morning because I stayed here because, you know, I didn't want to um, lose my camp spot. I've kind of got no food for breakfast. I've got plenty of baked beans, so nothing to have with it. No potato to make rosti, no bread to make toast. So I think it's just going to be beans this morning. I do have to go today because I've almost got no water at all. My battery is down to 49%. That's fine. I can go to like, you know, all the way down because it's a lithium battery, but I don't like to. We are now down to, what is it? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five nights till Nigel gets back. Five days left of solo van life in Australia. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining. I hope you've had a bit of a laugh at me. Thank goodness I caught that mouse or those mice. And fingers crossed, I don't have any more visitors like that to the van. If you want to know more about what it's like to live in a van, go check out this video here. And please consider subscribing to our channel as we continue our van life adventures throughout Australia and beyond. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.